We are still on our GACH modeling series. Thank you for staying with me. This is Crunch Econometrics. I have covered ARCH versus GACH models. Looking at the background in the first video, please make sure you have watched that before you watch this one that is on the basics of GACH modeling. After which, we take the others in sequential order. My advice again is that please do not skip any of these videos. Kindly watch them in sequential order for better understanding. Yeah, we said in the first video that the GACH model was developed by Tim Bulaslev in 1906. And for simplicity, equation one shows you a simple GACH 1 1 model, which is constructed as the conditional variance being a function of a constant term, a one period lag value of its own series, and a one period lag value of the squared error. So this is how you construct a GACH 1 1 model. As you can see here, as explained, it says that the conditional variance h at time t depends both on the past values of shocks captured by the lag squared error term, which is the h term, and the past values of itself, which is the h t minus 1. The GACH 1 1 model can be generalized to a GACH PQ model, as you can see in equation 2. For emphasis, I will say I'm following the specification as detailed in Astero and Hall, where the P lags are associated with the lag values of the GACH terms, while the Q lags are associated with the lag values of the squared error, as you can see in equation 2. And please know that if P equals 0, the entire equation of equation 2 reduces to a simple arch Q model. So let's look at the notes to the um, equation here. Theta and beta, that is the coefficients of the GACH and H terms, must be positive. That will ensure that the conditional variance is positive. So when you carry out your estimation, endeavor to observe the signs of the coefficients. For stationarity, the sum of both coefficients, that is for the GACH and H coefficients, must be less than 1. If that is not the case, then an integrated GACH process has occurred. For the GACH 1 1 model, you are only going to estimate three parameters phi, theta, and beta. The GACH 1 1 model equates to a GACH 2 model. Therefore, a GACH PQ model equates to an ARCH P plus Q model. For more on that, I will refer you to Davidson and Mackinon as shown on the screen for you to know how these um, mathematical constructs came about. Still on GACH modeling for the basics, the GACH 1 1 specification is very popular because it can fit into many data. It tells how volatility changes using the lag shocks, that is the squared error structure, and the momentum within the system via the lagged value of the conditional variance. It can capture long lags in the shocks using just few parameters. As emphasized before, I said that the GACH 1 1 model has just three parameters to estimate, and this will capture similar effects to an arch Q model, that is, an arch model with infinite lag structure, which will require you to estimate Q plus one parameters, where Q is very large. So a model with three parameters, like a GACH model, can sufficiently capture similar effects that an arch Q model will attempt to capture. So that also tells you that parsimonious models have better predictions than over-parameterized models. In practice, researchers have uncovered several stylized facts about the GACH model, so let's consider three of them. We are looking at volatility clustering, fat tails, and volatility mean reversions. Let's consider the first one, volatility clustering. For many weekly or daily financial time series, large values of HT-1 will be followed by large values of HT and small values of HT minus 1 will be followed by small values of HT. Looking at this graph, that is the time series of returns to the FTSE stock, we can observe volatility clustering. 
where we have large changes followed by large changes and periods of small changes followed by small changes. So volatility clustering is very evident in the pattern of the FUSTI stock given the period under survey. How about the second one, fat tails? It is factually known that many high frequency financial data have fatter tails, that is they are leptocortic than normal distribution. Therefore, a GATCH model will easily replicate fat tails in financial time series. So here is a histogram of the plot of the FUSTI stock and we can see that the tails are fat. So this series is clearly leptocortic. Let's take the last one which is volatility mean reversion. Though volatility may be experienced in financial markets, it is expected that in the long run, the economy will revert to calmness. And to construct the long run variance, you can see Roman Cosan 2010. This is how you construct the long run variance of the conditional variance. So volatility tends to revert back to its mean in the long run. Again, please support the video tutorials, strengthen your understanding by reading one or two papers. It will solidify your understanding. I have now covered the basics of GATCH modeling. Please don't go away. My next video will be to estimate a simple GATCH model. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your comments and your contribution so far. Thank you for sharing my link with your academic community. Um, please, as many students who are yet to be aware of crunch econometrics, you can tell them to subscribe to my channel. Click on the button. Subscription is free. It's at no cost. So that you can learn the basics of econometrics from the ground up. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with the next video, which is to show you how you can estimate a simple gauge model.